episode. One features of regional parties. Two classification of regional parties. Three rise of regional parties. Four role of regional parties. Five dysfunctions of regional parties. Six notes and references. Note one: the PDF link of this chapter is given below in the description box where you can visit and download it. Two: the models answers of UPSC mains exam 2022 have been available in Hindi and English language, which you can see by clicking on the link given in the description box. Welcome to Audiobook Gallery. Audiobook Gallery presents Indian Polity by M. Lakshmikant Sir. So let's start. Chapter 17. Role of Regional Parties. The presence of a large number of regional parties is an important feature of the Indian political system. 1. The Constitution, Article 324, provides for an independent election commission in order to ensure free and fair elections in the country. The power of superintendence, direction and conduct of elections to the parliament. the state legislatures the office of the president and the office of the vice president is vested in the commission one at present the commission consists of a chief election commissioner and two election commissioners too two there is to be only one general electoral roll for every territorial constituency for election to the parliament and the state legislatures thus The constitution has abolished the system of communal representation and separate electorates which led to the partition of the country. 3 no person is to be ineligible for inclusion in the electoral roll on grounds only of religion, race, caste, sex or any of them. Further, no person can claim to be included in any special electoral roll for any constituency on grounds only of religion, race, caste or sex or any of them thus the constitution has accorded equality to every citizen in the matter of electoral franchise for the elections to the lok sabha and the state assemblies are to be on the basis of adil franchise thus every person who is a citizen of india and who is 183 years of age is entitled to vote at the election provided he is not disqualified under the provisions of the constitution or any law made by the appropriate legislature parliament or state legislature on the ground of non residence unsound mind crime or corrupt or illegal practice for five parliament may make provision with respect to all matters relating to elections to the parliament and the state legislatures including the preparation of electoral rolls the delimitation of constituencies and all other matters necessary for securing their due constitution 6 the state legislatures can also make provision with respect to all matters relating to elections to the state legislatures including the preparation of electoral rolls and all other matters necessary for securing their due constitution but they can make provision for only those matters which are not covered by the parliament in other words they can only supplement the parliamentary law and cannot override it 7 the constitution declares that the validity of any law relating to the delimitation of constituencies or the allotment of seats to such constituencies cannot be questioned in any court consequently the orders issued by the delimitation Commission become final and cannot be challenged in any court. 8 The constitution lays down that no election to the parliament or the state legislature is to be questioned except by an election petition presented to such authority and in such manner as provided by the appropriate legislature. Since 1966 the election petitions are tribal by high courts alone. But The appellate jurisdiction lies with the Supreme Court alone. Article 323B empowers the appropriate legislature, parliament or state legislature to establish a tribunal for the adjudication of election disputes. It also provides for the exclusion of the jurisdiction of all courts except the special leave appeal jurisdiction of the Supreme Court in such disputes. So far no such tribunal has been established. It must be noted here that in Chandra Kumar case 5 
1997, the Supreme Court declared this provision as unconstitutional. Consequently, if at any time an election tribunal is established, an appeal from its decision lies to the High Court, Election Machinery, Election Commission of India (ECI) under Article 324 of the Constitution of India. The Election Commission of India is vested with the power of superintendence, direction and control of conducting the elections to the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies. The Election Commission of India is a three-member body with one chief election commissioner and two election commissioners. The President of India appoints the chief election commissioner and the election commissioners. Chief Electoral Officer (CEO) The chief electoral officer of a state union territory is authorized to supervise the election work in the state union territory subject to the overall superintendence, direction and control of the election commission. The election commission of India nominates or designates an officer of the government of the state union territory as the chief electoral officer in consultation with that state government union territory administration. District elect election officer do subject to the superintendence direction and control of the chief electoral officer the district election officer supervises the election work of a district the election commission of india nominates or designates an officer of the state government as a district election officer in consultation with the state government returning officer Ro, the returning officer of a parliamentary or assembly constituency is responsible for the conduct of elections in the parliamentary or assembly constituency concerned. The Election Commission of India nominates or designates an officer of the government or a local authority as the returning officer for each of the assembly and parliamentary constituencies in consultation with the state government union territory administration. In addition, the Election Commission of India also appoints one or more assistant returning officers for each of the assembly and parliamentary constituencies to assist the returning officer in the performance of his functions in connection with the conduct of elections. Electoral Registration Officer (ERO) The Electoral Registration Officer is responsible for the preparation of electoral rolls for a parliamentary assembly constituency. The Election Commission of India in consultation with the state UT government appoints an officer of the government or the local authorities as the electoral registration officer. In addition, the Election Commission of India also appoints one or more assistant electoral registration officers to assist the electoral registration officer in the performance of his functions in the matter of preparation revision of electoral rolls. Presiding officer the presiding officer with the assistance of polling officers conducts the poll at a polling station the district election officer appoints the presiding officers and the polling officers in the case of union territories such appointments are made by the returning officers observers the election commission of india nominates officers of government as observers for parliamentary and assembly constituencies These observers are of various kinds six one general observers the commission deploys general observers in adequate number to ensure smooth conduct of elections these observers are asked to keep a close watch on every stage of the electoral process to ensure free and fair elections two expenditure observers expenditure observers from central government services are appointed to keep a close watch on election expenditure of the candidates and to ensure that no inducement is offered to the electors during the entire election process for exercise of their franchise three police observers the commission deploys ips officers as police observers at state and district levels depending upon the sensitivity of the constituency wherever required they monitors all activities relating to force deployment law and order situation and coordinate between the civil and police administration to ensure free and fair election four awareness observers for the first time in the 16th lok sabha elections 2014 
the Commission deployed central awareness observers to oversee the efficient and effective management of the electoral process at the field level, mainly in respect of voter awareness and facilitation. Awareness observers are deployed to observe the interventions undertaken by the election machinery to bridge the gap in people's participation in the electoral process particularly in regard to voters turnout. They also monitors the various media related aspects of RP Act 1951 and observe the mechanism directed by the commission at district levels on checking the problem of paid news. 5. Micro Observers In addition to general observers, the Commission also deploys micro observers to observe the poll proceedings on the poll day in selected critical polling stations. They are chosen from central government central PCUs officials. Micro observers verify the BMF at the polling stations and certify the same before start of polling. They observe the proceedings at the polling stations on the poll day right from the mock poll to the completion of poll and the process of sealing of EVMs and other documents to ensure that all instructions of the commission are complied with by the polling parties and the polling agents. They also report to the general observers directly about vitiation of the poll proceedings, if any, in their allotted polling stations. 6. Assistant Expenditure Observers in addition to expenditure observers, assistant expenditure observers are appointed for each assembly segment to ensure that all major election campaign events are videographed and complaints of electoral malpractices are promptly attended. Election Process 7 Time of elections elections for the Lok Sabha and every state legislative assembly have to take place every five years unless called earlier. The President can dissolve Lok Sabha and call a general election before five years is up, if the government can no longer command the confidence of the Lok Sabha, and if there is no alternative government available to take over. Schedule of elections when the five-year limit is up, or the legislature has been dissolved and new elections have been called, the election commission puts into effect the machinery for holding an election. The constitution states that there can be no longer than six months between the last session of the dissolved Lok Sabha and the recalling of the new house, so elections have to be concluded before then. The commission normally announces the schedule of elections in a major press conference a few weeks before the formal process is set in motion. The model code of conduct for guidance of candidates and political parties comes immediately into effect after such announcement. The formal process for the election starts with the notification or notifications calling upon the electorate to elect members of a house. As soon as notifications are issued, candidates can start filing their nominations in the constituencies from where they wish. To contest. These are scrutinized by the returning officer of the Constituency concerned after the last date for the same is over after about a week. The validly nominated candidates can withdraw from the contest within two days from the date of scrutiny. Contesting candidates get at least two weeks for political campaign before the actual date of poll. On account of the vast magnitude of operations and the massive size of the electorate, polling is held on a number of days for the national elections. A separate date for counting is fixed and the results declared for each constituency by the concerned returning officer. The commission compiles the complete list of members elected and issues an appropriate notification for the due constitution of the house. With this, the process of elections is complete and the president, in case of the Lok Sabha, and the governors of the concerned states, in case of state assemblies, can then convene their respective houses to hold their sessions. Oath or affirmation It is necessary for a candidate to make and subscribe an oath or affirmation before an officer authorized by the election commission. For any particular election, the authorized persons are, principally, the returning officer and the assistant returning officer for the constituency. In the case of a candidate confined in a prison or under preventive detention, 
the superintendent of the prison or commandant of the detention camp in which he is so confined or is under such detention is authorized to administer the oath. And in the case of a candidate confined to bed in a hospital or elsewhere owing to illness or any other cause, the medical superintendent in charge of the hospital or the medical practitioner attending on him is similarly authorized. If a candidate is outside India, the Indian ambassador or high commissioner or diplomatic consular authorized by him can also administer oath affirmation. The candidate, in person, is required to make the oath or affirmation immediately after presenting his nomination papers and in any case not later than the day previous to the date of the scrutiny 8. Election campaign The campaign is the period when the political parties put forward their candidates and arguments with which they hope to persuade people to vote for their candidates and parties. Candidates are given a week to put forward their nominations. These are scrutinized by the returning officers and if not found to be in order can be rejected after a summary hearing. Validly nominated candidates can withdraw within two days after nominations have been scrutinized. The official campaign lasts at least two weeks. From the drawing up of the list of nominated candidates, and officially ends 48 hours before polling closes. During the election campaign, the political parties and contesting candidates are expected to abide by a model code of conduct evolved by the election commission on the basis of a consensus among political parties. The model code lays down broad guidelines as to how the political parties and candidates should conduct themselves during the election campaign. It is intended to maintain the election campaign on healthy lines avoid clashes and conflicts between political parties or their supporters and to ensure peace and order during the campaign period and thereafter, until the results are declared. The model code also prescribes guidelines for the ruling party either at the center or in the state to ensure that a level field is maintained and that no cause is given for any complaint that the ruling party has used its. Official position for the purposes of its election campaign 9. Once an election has been called, parties issue manifestos detailing the programs they wish to implement if elected to government, the strengths of their leaders, and the failures of opposing parties and their leaders. Slogans are used to popularize and identify parties and issues and pamphlets and posters distributed to the electorate. Rallies and meetings where the candidates try to persuade, cajole and enthuse supporters and denigrate opponents are held throughout the constituencies. Personal appeals and promises of reform are made, with candidates traveling the length and breadth of the constituency to try to influence as many potential supporters as possible. Polling days polling is normally held on a number of different days in different constituencies, to enable the security forces and those monitoring the election to keep law and order and ensure that voting during the election is fair. Ballot papers and symbols after nomination of candidates is complete, a list of competing candidates is prepared by the returning officer, and ballot papers are printed. Ballot papers are printed with the names of the candidates in languages set by the election commission and the Symbols are allotted to each of the candidates. Candidates of recognized parties are allotted their party symbols. Voting procedure Voting is by secret ballot. Polling stations are usually set up in public institutions, such as schools and community halls. To enable as many electors as possible to vote, the officials of the election commission try to ensure that there is a polling station within 2 kilometers of every voter, and that no polling stations should have to deal with more than 1500 voters. Each polling station is open for at least 8 hours on the day of the election. On entering the polling station, the elector is checked against the electoral roll 10 and allocated a ballot paper. The elector votes by marking the ballot paper with a rubber stamp on or near the symbol of the candidate of his choice inside a screened compartment in the polling station. The voter then folds the ballot paper 
and inserts it in a common ballot box which is kept in full view of the presiding officer and polling agents of the candidates. This marking system eliminates the possibility of ballot papers being surreptitiously taken out of the polling station or not being put in the ballot box. Since 1998, the Commission has increasingly used electronic voting machines EMVs, instead of ballot boxes. In 2003, all state elections and by-elections were held using EVMs. Encouraged by this, the Commission took a historic decision to use only EVMs for the Lok Sabha election in 2004. More than 1 million EVMs were used in this election. Electronic Voting Machine and Electronic Voting Machine EVM, is a simple electronic device used to record votes in place of ballot papers and boxes which were used earlier in conventional voting system. The advantages of the EVM over the traditional ballot paper ballot box system are given here. I. It eliminates the possibility of invalid and doubtful votes which, in many cases, are the root causes of controversies and election petitions. 2. It makes the process of counting of votes much faster than the conventional system. 3. It reduces to a great extent the quantity of paper used thus saving a large number of trees making the process eco-friendly. 4. It reduces cost of printing, almost nil, as only one sheet of ballot paper is required for each polling station 11. Supervising elections The Election Commission appoints a large number of observers to ensure that the campaign is conducted fairly and that people are free to vote as they choose. Election expenditure observers keeps a check on the amount that each candidate and party spends on the election. Counting of votes after the polling has finished the votes are counted under the supervision of returning officers and observers appointed by the Election Commission. After the counting of votes is over, the returning officer declares the name of the candidate, to whom the largest number of votes have been given, as a winner and as having been returned by the constituency to the concerned house. Elections to the Lok Sabha are carried out using a first-past-the-post electoral system. The country is split up into separate geographical areas, known as constituencies, and the electors can cast one vote each for a candidate, the winner being the candidate who gets the maximum votes. Elections to the state assemblies are carried out in the same manner as for the Lok Sabha election, with the states and union territories divided into single-member constituencies, and the first past the post electoral system used. Media coverage in order to bring as much transparency as possible to the electoral process, the media are encouraged and provided with facilities to cover the election, although subject to maintaining the secrecy of the vote. Media persons are given special passes to enter polling stations to cover the poll process and the counting halls during the actual counting of votes. Election petitions Any elector or candidate can file an election petition if he or she thinks there has been malpractice during the election. An election petition is not an ordinary civil suit, but treated as a contest in which the whole constituency is involved. Election petitions are tried by the High Court of the state involved, and if upheld can even lead to the restaging of the election in that constituency. Table 71.1 Results of Lok Sabha Elections General Elections Year Elective seat seats won by parties, major. First, 1952, 489 Congress 364, Communist 16, Socialist 12, KMPP 9, Jana Sun 3. Second, 1957, 494 Congress 371, Communist 27, Raza Socialist 19, Jana Sun 4. Third, 1962, 494 Congress 361, Communist 29, Swatantra 18, Jana Sun 14, Raza Socialist 12, Socialist 6. 
Fourth, 1967, 520 Congress to 83, Swatantra 44, Jana Sun 35, CPI 23, CPM 19, Sanyukta Socialist 23, Raza Socialist 13. Fifth, 1971, 518 Congress 352, CPM 25, CPI 24, DMK 23. Jana Sun 21, Swatantra 7, Socialist 5. Sixth, 1977, 540 to Janata to 98, Congress 154, CPM 22, CPI 7, AIDMK 18. Seventh, 1980, 540 to Congress 353, Janata Secular 41, Janata 31. CPM 36, CPI 11, DMK 16. 8, 1984, 540 to Congress 415, TDP 28, CPM 22, CPI 6, Janata 10, AI DMK. 12, BJP 2. 9th, 1989, 543 Congress 197, Janata Dal 141. BJP 86, CPM 32, CPI 12, AIDMK 11, TDP 2. 10th, 1991, 543 Congress to 32, BJP 119, Janta Dal 59, CPM 35, CPI 13, TDP 13, AIDMK 11. 11th, 1996. 543 BJP 161 Congress 140 Janata Dal 46 CPM 32 TMCM 20 DMK 17 SP 17 TDP 16 SS 15 CPI 12 BSP 11 12th 1998 543 BJP 182 Congress 141 CPM 32 AIDMK 18, TDP 12, SP 20, Samatha 12, RJD 17. 13th, 1999, 543 BJP 182, Congress 114, CPM 33, TDP 29, SP 26, JD U 20, SS 15, BSP 14, DMK 12, BJD 10, AIDMK 10. 14th 2004 543 Congress 145 BJP 138 CPM 43 SP 36 RJD 24 BSP 19 DMK 16 Shiv Sena 12 BJD 11 CPI 10 15th 2009 543 Congress to 06 BJP 116 SP 23 BSP 21, JD U 20, Trinamool 19, DMK 18, CPM 16, BJD 14, Shiv Sena 11, NCP 9, AI DMK 9, TDP 6, RLD 5, CPI 4, RJD 4, SAT 4. 16th 2014, 543 BJP to 82, Congress 44, AI DMK 37. Trinamool 34, BJD 20, Shiv Sena 18, TDP 16, TRS 11, CPM 9, Vaisa Congress 9, NCP 6, LJP 6, SP 5, AP 4, RJD 4, SAT 4. 17543 BJP 303, Congress 52, DMK. 2019 23. 22, Vaisa Congress 22, Shiv Sena 18, JD U 16, BJD 12, BSP 10, TRS 9, LJP 6, NCP 5, SP 5. Table 71 point to Prime Ministers after each Lok Sabha general election. General elections year. National Party's Prime Minister. First, 1952 asterisk BJS, BPI, CPI, FBL, AMG, FBL, 
RGHMS, INC, KLP, KMPP, RCPI, RRP, RSI, ஆர்ஜி ஹெச் எம் எஸ் ஐ என் சி கே எல் பி கே எம் பி பி ஆர்சிபி ஐ ஆர்ஆர்பி ஆர்எஸ்பி எஸ்சிஎஃப் எஸ்பி ஜவஹர்லால் நெஹ்ரு ஃபிப்டீன்த் ஆகஸ்ட் நைன்டீன் ஃபார்ட்டி செவன் டு third 1962 cpi inc bjs psp ssp swa do guljari lal nanda 27th may 1964 to 9th june 1964 lal bahadur shastri 9th june 1964 to 11th january 1966 guljari lal nanda 11th January 1966 to 24th January 1966 Fourth 1967 BJS CPI CPM INC PSP SSP SWA Mrs Indira Gandhi 24th January 1966 to 24th March 1977 Fifth 1971 BJS CPI CPM INC NCO PSP SSP SWA do 6th 1977 BLD CPI CPM INC NCO Morarji Desai 24th March 1977 to 28th July 1979 Charan Singh 28th July 1979 to 14th January 1980 7th 1980 CPI CPM INC I INC U JNP JNP S Mrs Indira Gandhi 14th January 1980 to 31st October 1984 8th 1984 BJP CPI CPM ICS INC JNP LKD Rajiv Gandhi 31st October 1984 to 2nd December 1989 9th 1989 BJP CPI CPM ICS SCS INC JD JNP JP LKD B Vishwanath Pratap Singh 2nd December 1989 to 10th November 1990 Chandra Shekhar 10th November 1990 to 21st June 1991 10th 1991 BJP CPI CPM ICS SCS INC JD JD S JP LKD PV Narasimha Rao 21st June 1991 to 16th May 1996 11th 1996 AIIC T BJP CPI CPM INC JD JP SAP Atal Bihari Vajpayee 16th May 1996 to 1st June 1996 HD Dev Govda 1st June 1996 to 21st April 1997 Indal Kumar Gujral 21st April 1997 to 19th March 1998 12th 1998 BJP BSP CPI CPM INC JD SAP Atal Bihari Vajpayee 19th March 1998 to 22nd May 2004 13th 1999 BJP BSP CPI CPM INC JD S JD U do 14th BJP BSP CPI CPM Dr Man Mohan Singh 2004 INC NCP 22nd May 2004 to 22nd May 2009 15th 2009 BJP BSP CPI CPM INC NCP RJD Dr Man Mohan Singh 22nd May 2009 to 26th May 2014 16th 
2014 BJP BSP CPI CPM INC NCP Narendra Modi 26th May 2014 to 30th May 2019 17th 2019 BSP BJP CPI CPM INC NCP AITC Narendra Modi 30th May 2019 to till date Astros there were 14 recognized parties on all India basis during 1952 elections After the first general election four parties were recognized as national parties Indian National Congress Raja Socialist Party Communist Party of India and All India Bharatiya Jan Sangh in 1953 Source Electoral Statistics Pocket Book 2015 Election Commission of India PP 118 to 120 Table 71.3 Participation in Lok Sabha Elections General Elections Year Number of candidates electorate million voter turnout percentage number of polling stations First 1952 1874 Second 1957 1519 to lakhs 20478 third 1962 1985 to 117.6855.4 to 2 lakhs 38244 fourth 1967 2369 to 174.6061.33 to lakh 67255 fifth 1971 to 174.0955.93 to 42944 sixth 1972 2439321.1760.493 lakhs 58208 seventh 1980 4460 to 363.9456.9 to 4 lakhs 34442 Eight five thousand four hundred and ninety three four hundred point one zero sixty four point one five lakhs five thousand seven hundred and fifty one nineteen eighty four ninth nineteen eighty nine six thousand one hundred and sixty four hundred and ninety nine point zero zero sixty two point zero five lakhs eighty nine thousand four hundred and forty nine tenth nineteen ninety one Eight thousand six hundred and ninety nine five hundred and fourteen point zero zero sixty one point zero five lakhs ninety four thousand seven hundred and ninety seven eleventh nineteen ninety six thirteen thousand nine hundred and fifty two five hundred and ninety two point five seven fifty seven point nine four seven lakhs sixty six thousand four hundred and sixty two twelfth nineteen ninety eight Four thousand seven hundred and fifty six hundred and five point five eight sixty one point nine seven seven lakhs seventy three thousand four hundred and ninety four thirteenth nineteen ninety nine four thousand six hundred and forty eight six hundred and five point eight eight fifty nine point nine nine seven lakhs seventy five thousand fourteenth two thousand and four Five thousand four hundred and thirty-five six hundred and seventy-one point zero zero fifty-seven point eight six six lakhs eighty-seven thousand four hundred and two. Fifteenth, two thousand and nine. Eight thousand and seventy-seven hundred and thirteen point seven seven fifty-eight point four eight lakhs thirty-four thousand nine hundred and forty-four. Sixteenth, two thousand and fourteen. Eight thousand two hundred and fifty one eight hundred and thirty four point zero eight sixty six point four four nine lakhs twenty seven thousand five hundred and fifty three seventeenth two thousand and nineteen 
8,026,910.5167.410 lakhs 36,295. Table 71.4 Women in Lok Sabha Elections General Elections, Year, Contested Elected First, 1952, 20 to Second, 1957, 45, 27, Third, 1962, 70, 34, Fourth, 1967, 67, 31, Fifth, 1971, 86, 20 to Sixth, 1977, 70, 19, Seventh, 1980, 140 to 28, Eighth, 1984, 164, 44, Ninth, 1989, 198, 27, Tenth, 1991, 325, 39, Eleventh, 1996, 599, 40. Twelfth, 1998, 274, 43, Thirteenth, 1999, 284, 49, Fourteenth, 2004, 355, 45, Fifteenth, 2009, 556, 59, Sixteenth, 2014, 668, 60 to 17, 2019, 724, 78. Table 71.5 Cost of Lok Sabha Elections General Elections Year Cost Borne by Election Commission In crores, 1st, 1952, 10.45 Second, 1957, 5.90 Third, 1962, 7.814, 1967, 10.95 Fifth, 1971, 14.436, 1977, 29.817, 1980, 37.078, 1984, 85.519, 1989, 154.2 to 10th, 1991, 359.1011, 1996, 597 point 1998, 6026.4013, 1999, 900.0014, 2019, NA. Table 71.6 Largest and Smallest Area Wise Lok Sabha Constituencies in 14th General Elections 2004. SL. No. Constituency State UT Area SQ. Kilometer I Largest Constituencies 1. Ladakh Jammu and Kashmir 1,73,266.372 Burma Rajasthan 71,601.43 Kutch Gujarat 41,644.554 Arunachal West Arunachal Pradesh 40,572.95 Arunachal East Arunachal Pradesh 39,749.642 Smallest Constituencies 1 Chandani Chowk NCT of Delhi 10.592 Kolkata North West West Bengal 13.233 Mumbai South Maharashtra 13.734 Mumbai South Central Maharashtra 18.315 Delhi Sadar NCT of Delhi 28.09 Table 71.7 Largest and Smallest Electors Wise Lok Sabha Constituencies in 16th General Elections 2014 SL No Constituency State UT Total No Of Electors I Largest Constituencies 1 Malkasgiri Telangana 29 lakhs 53,915.2 Ghaziabad Uttar Pradesh 22 lakhs 63,961.3 Bangalore North Karnataka 22 lakhs 29,063.4 
और नाउ उत्तर प्रदेश ट्वेंटी वन लैक्स टेन थाउजेंड थ्री हंड्रेड एटी एट फाइव नॉर्थ वेस्ट डेली एन सी टी ऑफ डेली ट्वेंटी लैक्स नाइनटी थ्री थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी टू टू स्मॉलेस्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूंसिस वन लक्षद्वीप लक्षद्वीप फोर्टी सेवन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी टू टू दमन एंड डी दमन एंड डी वन लैक टू थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड एंड सिक्सटी थ्री लद्दाख जम्मू एंड कश्मीर वन लैक फिफ्टी नाइन थाउजेंड नाइन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी नाइन फोर दादरा एंड नगर हवेली दादरा एंड नगर हवेली वन लैक एटी एट थाउजेंड सेवन हंड्रेड एंड एटी थ्री फाइव अंडमान एंड निकोबार आइलैंड्स अंडमान एंड निकोबार आइलैंड्स टू लैक्स फिफ्टी सेवन थाउजेंड एट हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी सिक्स Table seventy one point eight articles related to elections at a glance. Article no. Subject matter. Three twenty four. Superintendence, direction, and control of elections to be vested in an election commission. Three twenty five. No person to be ineligible for inclusion in or to claim to be included in a special electoral roll on grounds of religion. race caste or sex 326 elections to the house of the people and to the legislative assemblies of states to be on the basis of adult suffrage 327 power of parliament to make provision with respect to elections to legislatures 328 power of legislature of a state to make provision with respect to elections to such legislature 329 bar to interference by courts in electoral matters 329 a special provision as to elections to parliament in the case of prime minister and speaker repealed notes and references 1 there is a separate state election commission to deal with elections to the panchayats and municipalities in the state Two for complete details regarding election commission. See Chapter Forty Two. Three, the Sixty First Amendment Act of nineteen eighty eight has reduced the voting age from twenty one to eighteen years. This came into force on twenty eighth March nineteen eighty nine. Four for more details in this regard. See Universal Adult Franchise in Chapter Three. Five, L. Chandra Kumar V. Union of India. 1997 clause 3d of article 323b was declared as unconstitutional 6 handbook for media general elections to the 16th lok sabha 2014 election commission of india pp 111 113 this information is downloaded from the website of the election commission of india 8 general elections 2009 reference handbook press information bureau government of india p 189 9 the model code of conduct was agreed to by all the political parties in 1968 the election commission first effectively put to use the model code of conduct in the year 1991 to ensure fair elections and a level playing field Then the electoral roll is a list of all people in the constituency who are registered to vote in Indian elections. Only those people with their names on the electoral roll are allowed to vote. The electoral roll is normally revised every year to add the names of those who are to turn 18 on the 1 cent January of that year or have moved into a constituency and to remove the names of those who have died or moved out of a constituency. 11 General Elections 2009 Reference Handbook Press Information Bureau Government of India P181 If you like this episode please like share and subscribe to my YouTube channel Sukriya so,